Welcome back, lighting friends. Robert from Pathway Connectivity Solutions, talking about the Cognito Lighting Control Console. In the last video, we recorded memories, and as promised, this video is going to talk about editing some of the properties of those memories once they have been recorded. So I have a demonstration of uh, some RGB lights here. I have an all red, a green, a blue, and a cyan. Let's have a look at those. So these are all my memories here, a red one on bump number one, a green on bump number two, my blue on number three, and number four is my cyan. And you can push these up and then, you know, manually push towards any one color and then pull them out. Um, and uh, and that all operates as, as expected. Now, the bumps right now, are working in zero time. As soon as you press them, they go up and they're momentary. As long as I'm pressing the button, the look is active. When I let go, it res resorts back to whatever it was. So if it's red and I bump the green, it goes green. When I let go of the green, it goes back to red. Then I can bump my blue, get out, bump my cyan, get back to red and pull my red down. So that operates as expected. Now, if we wanted to change the way the bump buttons work, what we need to do is we need to edit the properties of the memories. So to do that, we go into the play mode. We go into the memories where we can actually see their names here. And this box here shows us the properties of each of the memories. Now, like everything in Cognito, if you want to change something, you press the pencil button and then you press the guy you want to change. So if I want to change green, I would do that and it shows here memory page, uh, the main memory page, memory two, or I could touch this one, it would be memory one, touch the cyan one, it would be memory four. So for instance, what I want to do is I want to add some timing to my bump buttons. So with number one selected here, I can see that my yellow wheel will change my bump up time is currently zero seconds. Let's change that to two and let's change the bump down time with the blue wheel to one second just to be different. And when we're happy, we hit the edit button. So now going back using my double shift shortcut, I can now press bump number one and it takes two seconds to get up to full intensity. And then when I let go, it takes one second to go back to its other level. So if I push in a green and then I hold down this button, it'll take two seconds to get to red. And then when I let go, it'll take one second to go back to green. So that was timing on a bump button. Let's look at the next property here. We will go to play again. We are looking at the properties of memory number one. We will edit it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change its bump mode from momentary, rolling the red wheel, I can change that to toggle. So pressing it once will be on, pressing it again will be off. So now let me go back to the live view here. And if I press it once, it takes two seconds to come up to full. And then I press it again it'll go out. Now there's a trick with the shift key as there always is. If you wanted to make that bump button number one a momentary even though it is defined here in the show as a toggle, what you can do is hold down the shift key and it will act temporarily as as a, uh, a momentary. Now there's time on there so as long as I hold it it's on if I take it off, it's off. So the same is true when you have a bump button. Let's look at the green one here, which is by definition momentary right now. If we wanted to make it a toggle, we will use the shift button and temporarily it'll become a toggle. So again, pressing it once is momentary. With the shift key down, pressing it again will toggle it. Now I can take my hands away. And that's on. And I could do the same with blue. Toggle that. 
and then I will untoggle the, well, I don't even know, need to hold the shift key. I can just untoggle the blue, untoggle the green. So that's momentaries and toggles with and without timing and with and without the shift override changing the function of what they do. Well, there's a mode that we didn't talk about, which is disabled. So let me just take this red one. I'm going to edit its properties. Rolling the red wheel, I can make it disabled. So now when I go back into select, this will actually run it as it normally does. But no matter what I do here, the bump button will not toggle it. So if you have a big cyclorama with lots and lots of lights on it and you don't ever, ever want to accidentally bump that to a level, you might want to disable the button. Now, I did talk about a third mode besides disabled, which we haven't seen yet. And I've done that here with uh, these red, blue, and tan ones on 11 and 12. And what I've done is I've changed their bump mode to radio buttons. Now, radio buttons is like an old car radio where you can only tune in to one radio station at a time. So you press one button, the other radio station button pops up. So you can only tune in one at a time. So if we look at this, I can press this button and I get these reds and blue look. And then I'm going to press number 12 now. Number 11 was the first I pressed. Number 12 will take me to tans. So we can look at that in, in play here. We have my tans. If I hit the 11, then it goes to the red and the blue and go back to the tans. Now, what do you do to get out of that? You can't just hit one, then the other, and then hit that second one again because it's already down. I've already tuned into that radio station. So this is where the shift button becomes handy again. I hold down the shift key and I hit the one that's down and it pops them up. So that is the radio mode of bump buttons. Now there's one other thing that I want to adjust here with the radios. I have recorded in the second page radio looks on 19, which is this blue green look, and on 20, which is a complete rainbow. Now, I didn't show them to you earlier, but 19 we call water and 20 we call fruity tutti. So those guys are acting in unison too. But what happens if we look at not just 11 through 20, but if we look at 1 through 20? Remember, back on 11, I had this look, which was on the first 10 lights. And its radio went to tans and then I had the aqua which brings on 11 through 20 and then tutti frutti which is 11 through 20 as well now the problem here is bringing on the first group of lights and then the second group of lights turns off the first group of lights these two groups of lights need to act completely independently one might be the cyclorama and the other one might be the top lights well, you don't want the sight going out when you change the color of the top lights. So what we can do from the play mode, we can edit all of these guys here and add them to a radio group. So instead of everybody working in the same group, right now the group has no name, which is a valid name. Everybody, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, are all part of this null radio group. So let me take this guy here, I'm going to edit him, and I'm going to put his radio group in as psych for cyclorama. And I'm going to do that for his friend here too. Edit. I'm going to change this to... Now, I'm doing this funny casing just to show you it doesn't matter. When you're done, it makes it all uppercase. So you don't have to worry about capitals at the front or the end. And then we can go down to these guys here. I can leave them null because I don't have another one. But just to be accurate, let's take these guys here and we'll call these my tops. And I'll take this guy here and I'll make him the tops too. So now I have two that are psych and I have two 
that are tops. So let's go back to select here. And now we can operate. We have our top lights, which is the second group. And we have our psych, which is another group. Now you see changing one doesn't affect the other. And I can do the shift trick again and turn them off. And the shift trick here to turn these guys off. So that is an overview of the different bump modes that you can apply to your memories after recording them. And uh, the next time what we're going to do is we're going to look at how these sliders function with setup. They can either be masters of lights or they could be masters of memory. So until next time, thanks for joining me.